News Radio 700 WLW. Apple is a really good company. There is no question about it. It is well run. They make great products. If you are an Apple fan, you know what I'm talking about. There's some people that don't like Apple computers. They think they're joke computers. Uh, they think they're more in line with graphic design and interface with um, games and things like that, more so than the traditional PCs. And if you think that way, that's fine. You know, I mean, it's to each his own. It's, it's not that big a deal. But Apple is a really well-run company. And it's a company that makes a lot of money. And in a lot of ways, as the market, as Apple goes, the market goes. But Apple did something really dumb leading up into Christmas, and I'm shocked. It was, um, it was just last Monday when Apple announced that it would stop selling some of its smartwatch models in the United States because it was fighting a patent battle over technology for detecting blood oxygen levels. I mean, people get these smart uh, watches. Maybe you have one, I've got one, and you do it for a number of reasons. Not only does it tell you what time it is, but it also gives you an idea of how you're doing health-wise. Some uh, can do uh, almost like a mini cardiogram for you. Others will tell you exactly what your blood oxygen level is. But it got into a, a patent fight with a smaller company. And so, for some reason, preemptively, Apple pulled watches from its, its online store and from the shelves of its stores, like the one in the Kenwood Town Center, on December the 21st, four days before Christmas. Now, these were Apple, the Apple Watch Series 9 and then the Apple Watch Ultra 2. So they were pulled on December the 21st, pulled from the Apple uh, store locations, and uh, people that had bought those watches before the 21st were, in a sense, hung out to dry. I mean, the watch you would buy, if it need, you had a warranty, they would honor the warranty, but if the warranty had expired, then you were kind of on your own to get that watch fixed or Apple wasn't going to do anything for you because it was in this big patent urinating contest with a smaller company. And it astounded me because Apple has a lot of lawyers, a lot of smart people, and this particular problem it had with the smaller company had been going on for a while. So I wondered why it happened, wonder what it might mean, and if indeed you had one of these watches or you bought them, the latest technology, I think they, you know, Amazon had them, like the Apple Series 9 watch, it was somewhere around five, $600, I think, was the going price for it. If you, if, you, uh, if, you, if you bought one of these things, you've got to be wondering, well, what's going on? Well, just yesterday, just yesterday, Apple went to court and it got an injunction against uh, not just this smaller company, but the International Trade Commission, which had stepped in and blocked Apple and sided with this smaller company. So now it's in the courts. It will be heard, I, th I think, I think um, the smaller company has until January 10th to answer what Apple has gone and done in this, in this, in this appellate court. And then depending on that answer, the court will decide at some level, maybe all the way up to the Supreme Court, whether or not these watches are okay to sell. But four days before Christmas, they pulled them off the shelves. And so when it gets into things like this, there's, there's only one guy really wanting it on here, and that's the guy they call the patent professor. His name is John Risby. Among other things, he's an adjunct professor of patent law at Nova Southeastern Law School. That's in Florida. Southeastern Florida has written some books about this, and uh, I wanted to see what he thought about this and where it may all be going for you, the consumer. And um, again, the court stepped in last night. John Risby, how are you on this glorious day? No, I'm good. It's always a, a pleasure to be here. Thank you. I'm glad you're with us here. Now, look, this looks like a he said, she said. You got the one company, I guess it's Massimo. I contends that Apple ripped them off, and then Apple is accusing Massimo of copying Apple Watch technology. Uh, so this winds up, uh, I guess, in a court of law. It's been going on for almost two years now. Why did it come to a head now? Yeah, so, I mean, it came to a head because the International Trade Commission 
actually uh, uh, issued a ban against Apple from selling uh, two of their their watches, the Series 9 and the Ultra 2 watch, as infringing Massimo's blood oxometer sensors. And uh, and talk about come to a head, and it's it's just kind of strange. The deadline, the the ban was supposed to take effect the day after Christmas, which almost seems like it's a way for the the International Trade Commission to say, hey, Apple, we know you have a lot of sales uh, for Christmas. We're not going to uh, initiate the ban until after the 25th. But uh, surprisingly, Apple voluntarily on the 21st decided to pull these two products uh, off their shelves and, and take them offline and, and no sales after the 21st. So they voluntarily ended uh, the availability of these two products early. They have been waiting for, uh, the, you know, the presidential kind of uh, overturn of the ITC. And uh, Biden is, is permitted to overturn uh, ITC decisions. They're rare, but sometimes for uh, policy issues, national interest, mm -hmm. uh, the public interest, perhaps the president may intervene. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, there's always hope that that would happen, but nothing has changed. Yeah, un un until yesterday when uh, they got a stay, uh, Apple got a stay, major victory for them in an appellate court. Uh, that, so the case has kind of been kicked down the road to January, and the uh, Trade Commission has until January to respond. But you know, Apple's got deep pockets. They got a lot of lawyers. But the question is, they're, they're smart people. How do they let it happen? How do they let it get to this point? Yeah, that, that, certainly that it appears that way. And in fact, the biggest losses to Apple is not going to be the loss of sales. Like, I mean, that's that, you know, some people estimate perhaps 300 to $4 million of sales lost. And that's a drop in the bucket to a company that's set for 120 billion approximately in uh, in 2023 of sales. So it's not going to be the sales impact, but the impact on how Apple is seen by investors and their stock value uh, could be taking a, a, a hit long term as investors uh, are now not too sure about Apple's uh, ability to avoid intellectual property disputes. They're, they're very well lawyered. They've typically been aggressive about enforcing their infringement and very careful on on their new product launches however like this this almost seems like a, a, a the, the, these quick last second like changes are uh get investors nervous yeah but see i i go i go back to that that last question somebody along the way had to drop the ball on this i i, I if you think of any yeah. any company with any kind of intellectual, forget curiosity, any kind of intellectual integrity, there had to be either somebody that dropped the ball or there was a defective amount of information passed up along the chain if indeed the, the International Trade Commission, which I don't know a lot about them, but my guess is they don't mess around, they found a problem here. Uh, this is this is more than a mistake that's going to cost them sales. And you're right, it's going to cost them at, in, in their stock prices, no doubt about it. But over and above that, if I'm Tim Cook, the first thing I'm saying when I found this out, and again, this has been going on for the better part of a, a year and a half, I'm saying, what happened, right? they got to do a deep dive and, and reverse engineer this, don't they? Uh, yeah, they do, because it's not only impacting, I mean, we talk about investors and possible, uh, uh, you know, like professionals that are looking at it and, and we're ignoring the impact on consumers. And for a lot of times you might think, okay, well, the consumers that, that bought the watch already, they got it, they should be happy. But we found out, and this is uh, a newly released, that any, any watches that have issues out of warranty they're out of luck. Those buyers are out of luck. Apple is not even uh, going to attend to repairs of, of any out of warranty products. Now, if you're in warranty, they're still going to go ahead and honor those. But not only are new sales impacted, but anybody that purchased, not knowing that this was going to happen, they're, they're now, once the warranty's up, regardless of whether they're willing to pay Apple for the repair, they're out of luck. So that it could also have an impact on on just the watch sales in general, if they if, uh, if if people have concerns, and also just just seeing Apple as an innovator 
is called into question oh. because this gives a lot more credence to Massimo's initial, initial claims right. that Apple not only uh, infringed their patents, but they have uh, a case that, that was uh, going on for some time claiming that they poached key executives right and unfair trade practices to try to steal this technology. Yeah, but, but this this court ruling yesterday, I guess, pu puts all of this on pause until Massino, Massimo, I'm sorry, can get with the International Trade Commission and reply to what Apple succeeded in doing in this appellate court. Again, they had stopped selling these Series 9 and Ultra 2 watches last week, and in response to what Massimo was doing in the complaint with the ITC, so now the warranties are okay pending what happens after the ITC uh, files its brief with the court on January 10. And then, of course, it'll be adjudicated down the road. I think Apple's stock was flat yesterday, at least the last I checked on it. See here, John, it's another example as they should have called you before all of this. You, I, I tell you, you ought to go to Washington work. You should have go. You should have been on Apple's, uh, you know, their their tech team, their board, their licensing, their lawyers. I mean, they should have <laughs> called you, John. Another example. Yeah. Well, and, and you know what? Another example where a lot of other attorneys say, "John, you're so lucky as a patent attorney. Nobody, you don't get those two a.m. emergency <laughs> calls of car accidents yeah. and, and whatnot." <laughs> 2 a.m. phone call. Hey, John, it's Tim Cook. I'm in jail. Can you come bail me out? No, that, that, I, I'd buy pictures of that. The old and if anyone's guess as to why Apple volunteered, like they had till the 26th under, by the ITC, why they ended sales on the 21st is, is a mystery. Yeah. And that was voluntarily pulling them off store shelves early as opposed to allowing sales to go through till the 26th. Yeah, probably cutting their losses. Maybe cutting lawsuits, which I'm sure will follow at some point. John Risby, always great catching up with you. If we don't talk before then, happy new year. And I know we'll talk down the road. Stay healthy, okay? Same to you. Thank you. Yeah, you bet.